i hope you uh, all are doing great in your respective colleges so as you have uh, attended the first part of the orientation session you all know that microbiology is uh, one of the most important uh, uh, session for uh, dealing with your uh, uh, day to day practice uh, when you become doctor you will be handling cases majority of cases uh, will be uh, infectious disease cases and uh, you you will be uh, able to deal with them uh, nicely if you have a thorough grip on microbiology in your second year so uh, this particular uh, subject will form a base to you uh, i mean uh, we all are aware that uh, last two years uh, the uh, the the whole world was covidized and uh, microbiology uh, formed a very important role in the diagnosis of covid-19 infections so as far as uh, pg and trans is concerned which uh, you all will be writing after uh, you finish your mbbs microbiology again is going to be a uh, very very uh, key role subject uh, because it uh, if you have a thorough knowledge in microbiology then the infectious disease related mcqs you can score very well it is a high scoring subject uh, undoubtedly it is uh, not like anat or physio or biochem which you will struggle to score in your entrance however at the same time if you do not have a grip on the subject then you will lose uh, a lot of mcqs so it is a high scoring as well as uh, i mean high yield subject uh, as far as entrance is concerned if you have a thorough knowledge in uh, micro you can write the infection related mcqs of psm medicine uh, pediatric uh, pathology uh, pharmacology antibiotic related mcqs and so on so in general if you look into the percentage wise a thorough knowledge of microbiology will have a hold of at least uh, one fifth of the total mcqs uh, that is 20% of the total mcqs which you will write in the in the pgm because infection related mcqs are at least 20% of total so you all are at the at the beginning of your second year so you will be uh, the college would have started in your uh, i mean the classes would have been started in your, in your respective colleges so we do not know which aspect or which uh, areas uh, uh, which topics are already over in your uh, respective colleges what we thought is in general microbiology uh, the a very important topic is the bacterial morphology which will which will uh, form again the basis of uh, general bacteriology of your general microbiology which which you all uh, will be reading or uh, it must be going on in your colleges so general uh, i mean the uh, uh, bacterial morphology uh, as uh, we thought it is a very important topic uh, which it will form the base of your uh, general bacteriology session so we thought we will take this as uh, as this webinar to address all of you uh, uh, dr divasri uh, will give a synopsis of the session to you and uh, then you can go back and you, and you can watch the full length of uh, 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 video of the session in the digital okay so the uh, uh, dr divasri so uh, she is working as a assistant professor in jss medical college mysore she has been associated with us uh, in essentials of microbiology uh, she is a co-editor and uh, uh, she is also author of uh, uh, essentials of hospital infection control and uh, we are coming up with another book uh, essentials of antimicrobial stewardship which uh, which will be released uh, shortly in couple of months so she is also author of that so she has been uh, 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 my colleague for last 7 uh, to 8 years so uh, the person the stage is yours the students are also yours so please uh, uh, start the session thank you sir Good morning to all students uh, so as sir has given an introduction this class will be a brief overview on morphology of bacteria as uh, most of you are starting with your second year uh, subjects now so we thought of taking this topic it's one of the very important topic um uh, i'll just give you a just or an overview of how you have to approach this chapter and what is the importance of it minor details of this you can read the book and also you can read, you can watch the complete session on the digital uh, app okay and then any queries you have you can leave the queries in the chat box the same will be addressed to you later 
okay you will not you don't have the permission to unmute and uh, unmute and ask a question so we request you to uh, uh, type your question in the chat box and leave it okay we'll address it at the end of the session so coming to this topic at this today's class we are going to um, uh, we are going to address all these points that is uh, various morphology of bacteria we'll start with the classification so based on the morphology how do we go about classification of bacteria then we'll go about what are the various examples based on the shape of the bacteria we'll study in detail gram positive and gram negative cell wall along with the differences between gram positive and gram negative cell wall and various cell wall appendages like capsule fimbriae and also other structures like spore we will try to understand the importance of all of this okay so we'll start with uh, morphology that is a uh, classification of bacteria so when we talk about classification based on the shape how do we divide the bacteria into so most of you would have understood this part we divide into cocci and bacilli okay cocci are more of spherical shape spherical shape and bacilli are rod shape again there are further differences we are going to study but this is a this classification of bacteria is based on the shape of the bacteria that is into cocci and bacilli and then based on the gram staining so based on the gram stain you can further divide this into further classify into gram positive cocci and gram negative cocci and bacilli can be classified into gram negative bacilli and gram positive bacilli this is how the classification goes like that is based on the gram stain you can divide the cocci into gram positive cocci gram negative cocci and bacilli into gram negative bacilli and gram positive bacilli now to help us further understand or further uh, identify the organism based on the arrangement okay the arrangement is a factor taken in and based on the arrangement of cocci bacilli we can we can uh, have a preliminary uh, preliminary idea on what could be the organism so example is gram positive cocci arranged in cluster example is staphylococci okay staphylococci this is an example gram positive cocci arranged in uh, chains is streptococci the same will be asked to you in your viva uh, in your theory viva or mostly whenever you go for gram staining exercise as a part of practical questions this can be asked gram positive cocci arranged in cluster example is staphylococci the chains is streptococci arranged in tetrad micrococci and arranged in octet can be sarcina is an example in among this you have streptococci and staphylococci are known human pathogen and these are less pathogenic that is in very few cases we isolate these organism as pathogen otherwise of pathogenic importance is staphylococci and streptococci and also there is gram positive cocci arranged in pairs here you can see two types of pairs cocci in pairs is there one is clearly lanceolate shaped this is pneumococci example is pneumococci gram positive gram positive cocci arranged in pairs which is typically lanceolate shaped or stem shaped example is streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococci and you have gram positive cocci slightly oval cocci arranged in spectacle shape that is example is enterococci okay example is enterococci so these are the examples of various arrangements of gram positive cocci in this definitive human pathogens is staphylococci streptococci pneumococci and enterococci all this in micrococci and sarcinia are more commonly isolated as contaminants so these are the example for gram positive cocci arrangements next coming to gram negative cocci arrangements you have again two types that is gram negative cocci arranged in pairs which are lens shaped other one is kidney shaped okay lens shaped classically it is neisseria meningitidis okay meningitidis is an example which causes which is an uh, important pathogenic Uh, agent causing meningitis, and you have this uh, the gram the gram negative cocci arranged kidney shape arranged in pairs. Example is Neisseria gonorrhoeae. 
okay these two are the examples for gram negative cocci and this is gram negative cocci arranged in pairs lens shaped example is meningitis and kidney shaped gram negative cocci arranged kidney shaped arranged in pairs is neisseria gonorrhoeae the meningitis meningitis is an important agent causing meningitis neisseria gonorrhoeae is an agent causing gonorrhea which is a sexually transmitted disease okay this is about gram negative cocci arrangements next coming to bacilli so in bacilli based on the gram staining again we have gram positive bacilli and negative bacilli gram positive bacilli arranged in chains an important example is bacillus anthracis which is an agent causing anthrax okay this is the morphological view of how it looks this is in the clinical specimen you can see the arrangement of bacillus anthracis in a clinical sample okay then you have another one that is v and y pattern arrangement of gram positive bacilli this is chinese letter pattern arrangement which is characteristic of corini bacterium diphtheria okay corini bacterium diphtheria causing diphtheria is a organism and classical arrangement of this organism is chinese letter pattern of v and y arrangement same there are other uh, corini bacterium which are arranged in palisading arrangement those are uh, those are other species of corini bacterium this is palisading arrangement palisading arrangement okay so these are the various arrangements of gram positive bacilli you have ex important example one arranged in chains that is bacillus anthracis the other one is classical chinese letter pattern that is corini bacterium diphtheria which is a positive agent of diphtheria then you have other corini bacterium species which are arranged in palisading arrangement other arrangement of gram positive bacilli of importance is filamentous arrangement okay filamentous arrangement seen in actinomycetes group that is actinomyces and nocardia nocardia and actinomyces are classically arranged in gram positive bacilli arranged in filamentous form okay these are the various type of arrangements of gram positive bacilli now coming to gram negative bacilli so there are certain in just raw shape without any specific arrangement that is this is gram negative rods e coli klebsiella enterobacter all of them have like this type of arrangement there is no typical arrangement but they are scattered gram negative rods then you have comma shape classically in seen in vibrio cholerae okay vibrio cholerae agent of cholera so you see like this comma shape then you have spirally called gram negative bacilli seen in spirochetes okay seen in spirochetes that is you see this in this type of arrangement you see in tryponema borrelia okay these are the organism in leptospira you see you see like this spirally coiled organisms so you have bacilli which does not have a specific arrangement but general scattered gram negative rods that is e coli and klebsiella then you have comma shaped vibrio cholerae then you have spirally coiled organisms spirochetes classically tryponema borrelia and leptospira okay then there are other type of arrangements also you have thumb prints appearance in bordetella okay curved appearance in helicobacter pylori and campylobacter then you have pleomorphic arrangement seen in proteus hemophilus sometimes in pseudomonas also then you have bacteria that lack cell wall that is mycoplasma so these are the various type of arrangements seen in gram negative bacilli that is rods we just discussed comma shape seen in vibrio cholerae spirally coiled in spirochetes then you have thumbprint appearance in bordetella pertussis which is an agent for pertussis curved uh, gra curved gram negative organism in h pylori and campylobacter 
pleomorphic that is they have varied arrangements like proteus in a single smear can look like a bacilli coccobacilli then elongated bacilli more than two or three morphological forms we say that is why they are termed as pleomorphic gram negative like and there are certain group of organisms which lack cell wall they don't have a definitive shape so that example is mycoplasma okay so this is about gram negative bacilli arrangement now this is the classification we have seen till now that is cocci bacilli based on the shape then gram positive gram negative based on the gram staining gram staining is a differential stain which we commonly employ in uh, routine diagnostics routine clinical diagnosis so that overview now coming into per se morphology of bacterial cell what all we need to understand how do we go about understanding this and you should remember this is very important especially bacterial cell wall is a very important question it can come as a main question and gram positive or gram negative cell wall can come as a five mark question and differences between gram positive and gram negative cell wall also can come as a uh, five mark question other than that we have cell wall appendages like capsule flagella fimbria which are all the short note questions so you should remember along with the examples so we'll have an overview of that now okay so this is the structure of bacterial cell so this is a structure so you can see here there is a rigid layer which is present that is a bacterial cell wall then we have various appendages of cell wall that is capsule you can see fimbria then there is inside the cell wall you can see there is plasma membrane so inside plasma membrane we have ribosomes these uh, prokaryotic organism unlike eukaryotic organism does not have any definitive cell organism it has only ribosome it has a very uh, uh, haphazardly arranged or very diffusely arranged genetic material that is nucleoid certain storage granules are present in inclusion bodies okay and this cell wall is separated by this matrix with the help of, by plasma membrane then you have cell wall as i told is a rigid the important points of all of this so coming to the bacterial cell wall it is a it has a very important role that is you should uh, it is it has a important functions first important function is it has it serves as it uh, it protects the bacterial cell against osmotic lysis so the first important function is it can it can protect the cell against uh, protect the bacterial cell against any osmotic lysis okay osmotic lysis it gives protection okay next because as i told you when we studied various arrangements of bacteria we understood so you saw there is spirally coil curve uh, then there is comma shape all that is because of rigid cell wall if the bacterial cell wall is not rigid and all the bacteria the complete bacteria collapses and loses its shape so the important the most important function of a cell wall is it gives rigidity and helps the bacteria maintain the shape of the cell okay then the cell wall is also a component where active cell division takes place and most importantly when you have when you come to the clinical application bacterial cell wall is a site of action of so many antibiotics which are routinely used example penicillin group of antibiotics you have cephalosporins you have carbapenems okay carbapenems then you have others like glycopeptides like vancomycin all these antibiotic acts on the bacterial cell wall so it is important to understand the bacterial cell wall because you can design an antibiotic to inhibit the synthesis of bacterial cell wall and that is how the the cell wall acting antibiotics work okay you should know the examples of antibiotics which acts on the cell wall next you have virulence factor example is endotoxin 
Endotoxin is a virulence factor which are present in the gram negative cell wall which we are going to discuss about this now. So it, it, it helps inhibiting phagocytosis. So it plays an important role, endotoxin plays an important role in establishing gram negative infections. So these are all the various functions of bacterial cell wall that is it protects the bacterial cell against osmotic lysis. It it, uh, it provides rigidity and helps the bacteria to maintain its shape, actively participates in cell division. It is a site of action of many antibiotics which we just listed and important virulent factors like endotoxin which plays a very important role in establishing infection. Okay, So these are the functions. Now coming to the structure of bacterial cell wall. This is a structure. So in bacterial cell wall, the gram positive cell wall is different from gram, gram negative cell wall and gram positive cell wall is slightly simple. It is not a complex structure whereas gram negative is a very complex cell wall structure. Okay, gram positive, gram negative, gram positive cell wall which we are going to discuss now is slightly simpler than a complex gram negative cell wall. So you can see here, when you look at the picture only, you know the majority of gram positive cell wall is made of this peptidoglycan layer. It's a very important component. There are around 80 to 100 layers of peptidoglycan which, are, which forms the main component of bacterial, the gram positive bacterial cell. Okay, so this is one. Then we have picoic acid. Okay, then there is periplasmic space between plasma membrane and peptidoglycan layer. So these, whenever they ask you to describe in exam about a gram positive cell wall, you need to elaborate in detail on how the peptidoglycan layer gram positive cell wall is formed and picoic acid. These are the two most important components of a gram positive cell wall. Okay. Now we will understand what is this peptidoglycan layer. So I told you in gram positive uh, organism it is 80 to 100 layer thick. So there is alternative, they are mucopeptide layers. You can see here they are all mucopeptide layers. They are arranged, you can see they are parallelly arranged and they are also interconnected. This is how the magnified picture or more detailed picture of a peptidoglycan la layer looks like. They are basically composed of NAG and NAM molecules. NAG molecule is N-acetyl glucosamine, N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid acetyl uramic acid okay they are alternative arrangement the, they uh, bond together that is nag and nam molecule together bond by means of other amino acid to form a mucopeptide chain how do they bond so you can see here there is a tetrapeptide chain you can see the NAG and NAM molecule are linked by this tetrapeptide chain this tetrapeptide the peptides are L-alanine D-glutamine, L-lysine and D-alanine and this you should remember in the same order okay alanine, glutamine, lysine and alanine so these are the um, four amino acids are which connects the NAG and NAM molecule and two chains of NAG and NAM molecule that is mucopeptide layer are connected by a pentaglycine bridge you can see the purple round here so two molecules two chains of muram um, two chains are connected with the help of this pentaglycine bridge how does this pentaglycine bridge connect you can see here l lysine of one gets linked to d alanine of the second that is corresponding mucopeptide chain this is how the the detailed structure of peptidoglycan layer looks like i repeat so there is link of nag and nam molecule again nag and nam molecule are interlinked by with the help of tetrapeptide chain corresponding chains are linked with the help of pentaglycine bridge which is between lysine and dlna okay this is how the this also should be part of the diagram whenever you explain about either gram positive or gram negative you should be in the detailed structure of peptidoglycan layer okay so next coming to second component of second important component of gram positive cell wall that is picoic acid so you have picoic acid one is the membrane picoic acid other one you can see here lipoticoic acid 
two types of ticoic acid are there exact role of ticoic acid is not known is still not clear but it is told that they also offer protection and rigidity to the cell wall okay these are the, the points you should remember ticoic acid mainly there are two types membrane ticoic acid and lipoticoic acid their exact role is not known it is known to offer protection to the cell wall okay now coming to gram negative cell wall as i told understanding gram positive cell wall was easier you can see the structure of gram negative cell wall it's slightly complex so there is lipopolysaccharide layer you can see then there is outer membrane layer periplasmic space and peptidoglycan plasma membrane see the peptidoglycan layer here peptidoglycan layer in the gram negative cell wall is just 8 to 10 layer thick compared to what we saw in gram positive cell wall which was almost 100 layers thick here we have a very thin peptidoglycan layer it's hardly 8 to 10 layers thick so how does a peptidoglycan layer of a gram negative cell wall differs from the gram positive you should understand this there is one major difference that is you saw lysine in the third position of a tetrapeptide chain in gram positive in gram positive you saw lysine whereas in gram negative it is mesodiamino mesodiamino pimelic acid okay so this is the amino acid which differs between gram positive and gram negative in gram negative it is mesodiamino pimelic acid in gram positive it was lysine okay tetrapeptide chain composition is different for gram negative and gram positive cell wall then one more important difference you don't see any pentaglycine bridges okay penta bridges are not seen in the connecting the uh, connecting the two layers of mucopeptide it is not seen they directly connect you can see here two layers of mucopeptide chain directly connect via mesodiamonopimilic acid to dlna that is how they are interconnected there is no pentaglycine bridges and the third third amino acid is not lysine here it is mesodiamonopimilic acid these two differences are the important differences which differentiate gram positive and gram negative peptidoglycan layer okay then there are other important components of gram negative cell wall which you should remember one is this outer membrane you can see here this is the outer membrane outer membrane uh, there are important function one of the important function is it offers protection to the bacterial cell also it helps in transport of larger molecules so there are certain carrier proteins which helps in transport of molecule larger molecules and this also uh, prevents the loss of constituents like periplasmic enzymes because this acts like a bridge okay that is the role of outer membrane you can see here there is an outer membrane protein which is present and you have also a special type of lipoprotein that is bronze lipoprotein which connects this outer membrane protein to the peptidoglycan layer so these are the points important points under outer membrane main function is protection transport of larger molecules and prevents the loss of constituents like periplasmic enzymes now coming to lipopolysaccharide so lipopolysaccharide this is a lipopolysaccharide layer which is three parts one is lipid a layer you can see the yellow round these are lipid a molecule second component of lipopolysaccharide is a pore polysaccharide and third component is o specific side chain okay there is lipid a so whenever a gram negative lipopolysaccharide uh, layer you are explaining it has three components one is lipid a layer second is core polysaccharide layer and third is o specific that is side chain so what is the role of the each of this so lipid a layer is very very important component because this is what has endotoxic activity we spoke about an important virulence factor that is endotoxin correct so this layer has endotoxic activity that is lipid a that is it brings about pyrogenicity lethal effect to the cell brings about tissue necrosis anti-complementary activities b-cell mitogenicity and anti-tumor activity all these are the 
functions of lipid A of gram negative bacterial cell wall and it's a very very important virulence factor establishing gram negative infection. So this is what you remember about lipid A component. Then you have a core polysaccharide from which you have a somatic antigen that is O specific side chain which comes off okay around 8 to 10 O specific side chain which comes off that is these are extensions and these are acts as a surface antigen O specific side chain acts as a surface antigen this is about lipopolysaccharide layer where you are going to enumerate about lipid A component core polysaccharide component and O specific side chain component okay Next coming to outer membrane layer. So this is the outer membrane layer. We have seen about this, um, uh, seen about this in the uh, beginning of explanation of gram-negative cell wall. So outer membrane layer has an outer membrane protein, and we have a bronze protein which connects the peptidoglycan layer to this outer membrane protein. It helps in transport of various molecules and ions. Okay. Next coming to, we will see what is the difference between gram positive and gram negative cell wall. So now you all will be able to recollect what we have studied. So gram positive bacterial cell wall has a thicker peptidoglycan layer compared to thinner peptidoglycan layer of gram negative cell wall. In third position tetrapeptide chain, it is lysine in gram positive cell wall and mesodiamino Pemilic acid in gram negative cell wall, pentaglycin, which is present in gram positive cell wall, absent in gram negative cell wall, lipid content. You all saw there is you all saw that there is lipopolysaccharide layer. There is lot of lipid content present in gram negative cell wall to a very less amount of lipid which is present in gram positive. The gram negative predominantly has more lipid content compared to gram negative. Lipopolysaccharide with endotoxic activity is present in gram negative, absent in gram positive. Tcoic acid is present in gram positive, absent in gram negative. And when we talk about variety of amino acids, very few are present in gram positive and numerous the amino acids are present in gram negative including aromatic amino acids which are absent in gram positive cell wall so this difference is important to remember so again i repeat one is my first one is peptidoglycan layer you tell that is gram positive cell wall has a thicker peptidoglycan layer compared to gram negative cell wall in peptid when we talk about cell wall you should also remember the change in third position tetrapeptide side chain where it is lysine in gram positive and mesodiamenopamilic acid in gram negative pentaglycin which is present in gram positive absent in gram negative lipid content very less in gram positive predominantly present in gram negative then lipopolysaccharide is absent in gram positive present in gram negative Tcoic acid present in gram positive, absent in gram negative. Amino acids numerous are present in gram negative, including aromatic amino acids. Okay, this is about bacterial cell wall. So as I told you, it can come as a 10 mark question. Draw a neat label diagram of bacterial cell. So if it is asked like that, you should draw a detailed diagram of both gram positive and gram negative cell wall and, and explain the important components of it. Okay. So this is about bacterial cell wall. Now coming to cell membrane. So all of us have understood about this cell membrane by studying the in 12th standard about fluid mosaic model where we have understood what are the important, um, how do we establish that is how there is this phospholipid layer, bilayer of phospholipid is present in the cell membrane and how, one important thing you should remember is how does this bacterial cell differ from the other cell that is other eukaryotic cell, sterols are absent in bacterial cell okay which is present in eukaryotic cell instead of that a modified component of sterol that is hoponoid which are present here in bacterial. Few bacteria has this component which is a modified sterol. Otherwise, in general, sterols are absent in most of the bacterial cell. There is also a variety of carbohydrate which is present that is oligosaccharide and glycolipid which is present. There are integral proteins and 
peripheral proteins this is about the cell membrane of a bacterial cell it has various functions like it is semi permeable it allows the passage of few ions and molecule whereas it is selectively inhibits for few others so that is why it is called semi permeable membrane it helps in the transport of various ions molecules and proteins okay and site of metabolic process that is synthesis of cell wall synthesis lipid synthesis all the metabolic process can happens in bacterial cell membrane these are the important uh, functions that is semi permeable nature helps the selective transport of ions and molecules same thing extension that is transport system and site of metabolic process for various activities these are the functions of bacterial cell membrane next coming to we have cytoplasmic matrix we i showed you in the first picture cytoplasmic matrix does not have no specific organelles are there okay unlike eukaryotes no organelles only there are ribosomes which are important for protein synthesis okay the 70s can be divided into 50s and 30s so ribosomes for protein synthesis then we have storage granules which are also called as inclusion bodies these inclusion bodies can be glycogen granules or it can be there are volutin granules volutin granules or metachromatic granules metachromatic granules these are seen classically in scorini bacteria diphtheria okay volutin granules or metachromatic granules are seen classically in scorini bacteria diphtheria basically inclusion bodies are storage granules which are seen in the cytoplasmic matrix next coming to mesosomes they are invaginations of cell membrane okay invaginations of cell membrane mainly they have respiratory enzymes okay respiratory enzymes are present so it plays a very important role in the process of bacterial cell respiration so these are the components which are present in the matrix one is ribosome second one is storage granules which are otherwise called as inclusion bodies then invaginations of uh, invaginations which are seen which uh, mainly takes part in respiration next coming to nucleoid so what is nucleoid there is been bacteria there is no nothing specific called as nucleus so the genetic material is present very in a diffuse form that is single haploid chromosome is present and this comprises of supercoiled double stranded dna okay supercoiled circular double stranded dna is present and bacteria also possess extra chromosomal dna which are termed as plasmid so when we talk about bacterial genetics we will discuss in detail about what is plasmid and what is this extra chromosomal dna material but you should remember that bacteria whenever you are explaining a bacterial cell it does not have a definitive nucleus it has a nucleoid which possess which is basically a single haploid chromosome with circular double stranded dna okay this is about nucleoid next we have cell wall appendages like capsule flagella fimbria and spore we'll see briefly about all this so what is this capsule or a slime layer you should understand what is this and what is the difference between capsule slime layer and a biofilm so there is you can see this is the bacterial cell the pink structure around that there is an amorphous viscid material which is outside the cell wall you can see this is a layer in this it is very uh, diffuse whereas here it is definitive these are amorphous viscid material which are outside the cell wall and these are called as glycocalyx okay these are called as glycocalyx if this glycocalyx is very formed and definitive then it is called as a capsule okay if it is very diffuse without a definitive structure then it is called as a slime layer that is the difference between capsule and a slime layer you can see capsule has a definitive glycocalyx whereas the in slime layer the in um, in few bacteria the glycocalyx is very diffuse there is no definitive structure at all that is called as a slime layer then uh, there is a phenomenon called as biofilm where a group of bacteria will secrete this extra polysaccharide material around it and forms a 
complete sheath around it that is called as a biofilm i'll explain you about biofilm a little later here you just remember what is a capsule and what is a slime layer so you should know what are the examples of capsulated organism you have pneumococci pneumococci meningococci meningococci then you have uh, nisi uh, then you have hemophilus influenzae there are some other bacteria also which secretes the, which has this capsule and most of the bacteria we talk about has polysaccharide capsule okay polysaccharide capsule one exception is bacillus anthracis has polypeptide capsule polypeptide capsule okay this this is an important mcq also bacillus anthracis has polypeptide capsule most of the other bacteria has polysaccharide capsule one of the capsulated fungus is cryptococcus neofungus this also has polysaccharide capsule so at least 3 to 4 example of capsulated organism you should remember because it can come as a three mark question okay and when you write about it you should also write about the composition most of the bacterial capsulated bacteria are polysaccharide except for bacillus anthracis it is a polypeptide capsule now what is the function of the capsule so again capsule also plays a very very important role in virulence factor that is it protects the bacteria against phagocytosis so our immune system will produce certain phagocytic cells and try to phagocytose the organism but if it is if it is a capsulated organism phagocytosis becomes very very difficult it prevents the cell from it's because it is an outermost layer it prevents the cell from dying drying out the desiccation also form action of lysozyme and bacteriophages and they are toxic to host cells and induces abscess formation that is in certain organisms like bacteroides fragilis okay this is a non sporing anaerobe so bacteroides fragilis organism so in these kind of organism they are toxic to the host cells and they promote the formation of abscess okay these are the important functions also they form an important source for nutrients and energy and it is also uh, anti capsular antibodies are protective in nature that is why we have the mostly uh, the capsular vaccines polysaccharide capsular vaccines are available pneumococcal vaccine we have pneumococcal vaccine meningococcal vaccine meningococcal vaccine and hib vaccine these are all the capsular uh, the vaccines which are uh, which are um, the produced against uh, by by anti capsular antibodies so they are protective in nature so these are the important examples of vaccines so basically capsule most important is it plays a very important virulence factor in establishing infection source of nutrients and energy and also you should mention about capsular vaccines next coming to biofilm formation and addition one more important thing i like to tell you here is how do we demonstrate the presence of capsule so it is important that is india in preparation is a uh, microscopic method which is used for demonstration of capsule it is basically a negative staining negative staining method that is you have a background which is dark and only the capsulated organism gets delineated it becomes obvious in such a preparation so this is how there are various method but this is a most common method used for demonstration of capsule that is india in preparation basically it's a negative staining method okay next coming to biofilm formation and addition as i told you biofilm formation what happens here a group of organisms the group of organisms will form the extra extra cellular polysaccharide matrix we form and this matrix will protect the bacteria there is group of bacteria here right this group of bacteria is completely protected by all environmental stress like you could like antibiotics like disinfectants means they form a matrix so that it is protective against all kind of en environmental stress including antibiotics and disinfectant where does this form these uh, these biofilm formation is more commonly seen on all plastic surfaces we see this on 
prosthetic devices on prosthetic heart heart valves we also see this in urinary catheters urinary catheter central line we see on these devices and prosthetic valve where the organism will get adhered to the surface uh, the organism will get adhered to the surface of the material and completely form a extra polysaccharide matrix and it this this layer protects the organism against all type of environmental stress like antibiotics and disinfectants okay so this is about biofilm formation and why this biofilm formation uh, is uh, uh, very crucial because this biofilm helps in adhesion to the plastic or any inanimate surface like prosthetic valves and urinary catheters okay next coming to demonstration of capsule i have already told you this is the india this is a picture of india ink preparation india ink preparation where you can see the uh, uh, the background is black the organisms are highlighted the, the this distinctive margin is a capsule surrounding the organs okay now coming to flagella so flagella you all know is an organ of locomotion okay organ of locomotion so it helps in motility of the organism motility of the organism so there are various types of flagella arrangement of flagella you have monotrichous flagella that is you can see this is the bacteria and flagella coming out of only one pole that is monotrichous classically seen in vibrio cholerae pseudomonas and campylobacter okay example of monotrichous flagella the first one is you see uh, vibrio cholerae pseudomonas and campylobacter lophotrichus is from the single pore multiple flagella will arise single pore multiple flagella example is pyrillum throughout the bacterial cell that is peritrichus example is salmonella typhi and escherichia coli then we have amphitrichus that is from both the poles one flagella will arise that is seen in alkaligens fecalis so at least two to three examples you should remember for different arrangement of flagella we have monotrichus lophotrichus peritrichus and the amphitrichus monotrichus single pole single flagella the uh, uh, both the poles single flagellum is amphitrichus throughout is peritrichus and lophotrichus is one pole multiple flagella along with examples you should remember how is the flagella structure form so you can see here flagella structure has there is a filament okay and there is a basal body okay filament and basal body is there which is linked by a structure called as hook so what does this uh, basal body comprises of basal body has four rings in gram negative and two rings in gram positive okay in two rings in gram positive gram positive there is only p and m here there is p s l and m so outer layer you can see here our the four ring in four rings the outer two rings you can see l ring okay l ring and then p ring p ring is in periplasma in this uh, near the peptidoglycan layer then s ring you can see is in the periplasmic space and plasma membrane there is m ring there are four rings whereas only this peptidoglycan layer the p ring and m ring are present in gram positive cell wall so this is the basal body and you have filament which is coming out of the basal body both of this are linked with the help of a hook this is a ultra structure of flagella now different type of motility we have tumbling type of motility seen classically in listeria darting motility seen in vibrio okay swarming motility seen in protease so these are the classical description and otherwise how do we describe motility actively motile organism or non motile okay if the organism does not exhibit any motility we describe it as non motile organism otherwise we describe it as most of the bacteria are actively motile organism in specific organism there is specific description like tumbling motility seen in listeria darting motility seen in vibrio cholerae swarming motility seen in proteus organism okay so this is a description of bacterial flagella and various type of bacterial motility now coming to what is this fimbriae or pile so fimbriae is an organ of adhesion 
okay one important function is adhesion so this fimbria or otherwise called as pilae has two types that is common pilae or common fimbria other one is sex pilae this helps in conjugation okay you all will study in detail about what is bacterial conjugation in bacterial genetics here you just remember fimbria plays a very important role one is organ of adhesion that is common pilae other one is one which is uh, called a sex pilae which helps in bacterial conjugation okay so how do we de detect uh, the this bacterial fimbria one important uh, example is there is surface pellicle formation surface pellicle in obligate aerobes okay obligate aerobes like pseudomonas example is pseudomonas will form this layer in the top of the broth you can see here in top of the liquid culture the organism the fimbria get attached to each other and forms the surface pellicle this is how we demonstrate the surface pellicle or detect how, how we detect the fimbria next last part of this uh, uh, bacterial cell wall uh, cell and the other appendages you have bacterial spores so what are these bacterial spores these spores are produced by the vegetative bacteria okay these are produced by the vegetative bacteria whenever there is unfavorable environment means to protect itself from the unfavorable environment it will get converted into this spores okay remember this is not a method of reproduction that is you cannot there is no bacterial multiplication here only what happens is bacteria gets converted into a form which is called as a spore in whenever there is unfavorable environment the back whenever the bacteria is subjected to unfavorable environment so this is a structure of a spore okay this is how a spore looks like the side there is a cycle of spore not very important if you just remember how the spore what is a spore form up is more than enough so here you have a pore okay first is there is a pore then you have cortex okay you can see here core has the genetic material okay so the genetic material is present inside the pore then you have this cortex between the core and cortex is this two layer that is there is inner membrane and germ cell wall core and cortex is divided by this germ cell wall and inner membrane dna is present that is genetic material is present inside the core then you have this coat coat the uh, cortex is divided from the coat by means of outer membrane last layer is what you have exosporium okay these are the various structure of spore so there is exos from you go, if you go from outside to inside it is exosporium and coat divided by an uh, divided by a here you have a uh, outer uh, coat and exosporium divided by this membrane and then you have cortex cortex and coat is divided by this outer membrane and the uh, cortex and the core is divided by means of this germ cell wall and inner membrane and core has the genetic material now coming to shape and spores of so bacterial spores when you talk of there are two types of bacterial spores can be bulging or non bulging spores bulging or non bulging spores bulging spore example is clostridium in clostridium organism you see the bulging spore non bulging spore are seen in bacillus okay and when you talk about the arrangement of this spore you have you can see here it can be circular or spherical or it can be oval and arrangement you can see it can be terminal subterminal or in the center terminal subterminal center and uh, it can be bulging or a non bulging spore bulging spores are example is clostridium non bulging spore example is bacillus okay next is coming to application what is this spore uh, uh, used for in a day to day um, the day to day setting in hospital spores of geobacillus cerothermophilus and spores of bacillus atrophius which are non pathogenic spores non pathogenic spores which are used as a biological indicator used as a biological indicator for understanding or for knowing the efficacy of sterilization process 
efficacy of sterilization process. Example is spores of Geobacillus thermophilus used in autoclave and plasma sterilization and spores of Bacillus atrophius is used to use as a biological indicator in hot air oven and ethylene oxide sterilization. Okay, these are the important uh, examples for application of spores. This rush through the question and answers. So arrangement of cocci, uh, which is the which of the following is wrong. So chain is streptococci correct, pairs pneumococci, tetrad is not gonococcus and gonococcus is a gram negative cocci classically arranged kidney shape, they are gram negative cocci arranging kidney shape. Tetrad example is micrococci, okay. Cluster staphylococcus that option is also correct. So the answer is tetrad gonococcus. Gonococcus is a gram negative cocci arranged in pairs. They are kidney shaped. If it is lens shaped gram negative cocci arranged in pairs, then it then it is meningococcus. So second question was which of the following gram positive bacilli arrangement is wrong? The chain gram positive cocci in chain bacillus anthracis is correct. Described as bamboo stick appearance. Chinese letter pattern for any bacterium diphtheria is a correct arrange, a correct option. Palisade arrangement diphtheroids, that is, diphtheroids are basically other Corini bacterium species which we consider which we commonly do not consider them as a pathogen, so are diphtheroids. That palisading arrangement is correct. Filamentous form is not mycobacterium tuberculosis. Filamentous form is actinomycetes group, that is actinomyces or nocardia. So the answer here is option B. Next is gram positive cell wall differs from gram negative by all except. So, mesodiamonopamilic acid is present, correct. Pentaglycin bridge is present, which is wrong. It's present only in gram positive. Okay. Lipopolysaccharide again is present in gram negative, absent in gram positive. Picoic acid is present in gram positive, absent in gram negative. So, the option is mesodiamonopamilic acid present. Next is which of the following bacteria possess a polypeptide? I told you most of the bacteria has polysaccharide capsule except for Bacillus anthracis which has a polypeptide capsule. Next question, flagella can be demonstrated by which method? India in staining is for demonstration of capsule not for flagella. It is tannic acid staining, it is for direct demonstration of flagella. Okay? All of the following agents are sporicidal except so in disinfectant chapter whenever we study sterilization disinfection you will study which of the methods are even uh, able to kill the spores also. So there are a few methods like hydrogen peroxide, formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, then you have water oven, autoclave, plasma sterilization all those ETO sterilization are all sporicidal. Absolute alcohol is not a sporicide, it's an intermediate level disinfectant, it is not, it does not kill spores. So the option here is absolute alcohol. Okay, so these are the uh, MCQs. Uh, we have come to the end of this session.